Hello viewers, today we'll be looking at the simple proof for the sum of roots and the product of roots of quadratic equations. It's simple, straightforward, please ensure you watch it to the end so that you get the full benefit. Before we proceed, it will be appreciated if you can kindly subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification bell so that you are promptly notified of videos that are uploaded on this channel. So we are looking at the general form of a quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero, provided a is not equals to zero. If a is zero, therefore you know that we the first term, which is this term, is knocked off. And then we now have bx plus c is equals to zero. And the moment we have bx plus c is equals to zero, it is no longer a quadratic equation, it now becomes a linear equation. So the condition for us to have a quadratic equation is that a must not be equals to zero. Now, if you look at this quadratic equation, we have the ax squared term, which is actually the quadratic term, the bx term, which is actually the linear term, and the c, which is actually the constant term. Now, the coefficient of x squared, that is whatever is multiplying x squared, is a. So a is multiplying x squared, so that's the coefficient of x squared. And then b multiplies x, so that's the coefficient of x. And then c is the constant. So for the roots, x is equals to alpha and x is equals to beta. So when we talk about the roots, what we are simply saying is what is the solution? So in a scenario where we have x, which is the solution being alpha, just an example, and x, which is another solution being equals to beta. So like I said, that sign is alpha and the other sign is beta. So in a scenario where x is equals to alpha, alpha being the solution, if we take it to the left hand side it's positive right now so by the time we take it to the left hand side it now becomes x minus alpha is equals to zero so for x which is equals to beta that is the other solution x is equals to beta by the time we take put the beta on the left hand side currently it's positive by the time it crosses the equality sign it becomes negative so you now have x minus beta is equals to zero. So if you have x minus alpha is equals to zero and x minus beta is equals to zero, it tells you that their product also will be equals to zero. And then we can simply expand. Expand in the sense that we will take x and then multiply it by the entire x minus beta and that's what you have here and then we will take minus alpha which is what we have here and also multiply by the entire x minus beta which is also what we have here and everything is equal to zero as it was above so once we do that we'll be able to expand this accordingly so you have your x times x, which is x squared, x times minus beta, which is minus beta x. And then we go to the minus alpha times x, which is minus alpha x, and then minus alpha times minus beta, which is plus alpha beta. And that's how we have the expansion we are seeing. So what we can simply do is to factorize this particular two terms. We factorize it by simply bringing out 
the x and the minus sign. And then when we bring that out, we have alpha plus beta, as we can see. So we have x squared minus bracket open alpha plus beta bracket close times x plus alpha beta is equals to zero. So that's the factorized form and simplified form of this expression. So we will be carrying out some comparison. We just established this particular expression and we will call it equation one. We just simplified this expression and we will be calling it equation one. Now, we will be comparing it with the general form of the quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. But what we will simply do is we will divide it through by a. We will divide the left-hand side by a, and we will divide the right-hand side by a. So you will ask me, why are we doing that? So what we are trying to do is to get an expression for the quadratic equation, that is the general form, so that we can make an easy comparison with equation one above. You notice that if you look at equation one above, the coefficient of x squared is one. So the reason why we are dividing through by a is so that the coefficient of x squared in this general term will also be one. So when we simplify that further, what we have is x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a is equals to zero. So now we have equation two. How did we get equation two? All we did was simplifying the general form of the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, which is equals to zero and then we divide it through by a. Now we have two equations, equation one, and we also have equation two. All we will simply be doing right now is to do some comparison. Now, if you look at the coefficient of x in equation one, the, equation, the coefficient of x in equation one means what is multiplying x? In equation one and that is minus into alpha plus beta and that's what we have written on the top right hand side and then what is the coefficient of x in equation two we have b over a and that's why we're all we are doing is simply equating the coefficient of x in equation one with the coefficient of x in equation equation two we are simply equating that because whatever is multiplying x in equation one and in this case it is minus into the open bracket alpha plus beta bracket closed is equals to what is the coefficient of x in equation two which is simply what is multiplying x in equation two and that's b over a so, like we just mentioned right now, the minus into open bracket alpha plus beta bracket closed is the coefficient of x in equation one. As we can see, as highlighted in green on the left hand side, and then we have b over a, which I mentioned earlier as the coefficient of x in equation two and we can see that also being circled in green so what we have now if we the alpha plus beta if we multiply both sides by minus one so we now have alpha plus beta on the left hand side will now be equals to minus b over a so we have established that alpha plus beta, that is the sum 
of the roots is equals to minus b over a. Now we're going to the constant term, which is alpha beta. If you look at equation one, you have alpha beta, that is alpha times beta together. And then what, what is the constant term in equation two? You have c over a. So we have alpha beta is equals to c over a. Alpha beta being the constant term in equation one. And as we can see above, which has been encircled in red, and then the c over a, which is the constant term in equation two which we also see has been encircled in red. So looking above, we can, we can clearly see that alpha plus beta is equals to minus b over a, which tells you that the sum of, this, of the roots is equals to minus b over a, and then alpha beta, which is the product of the roots, is equals to c over a. So we have simply established that for a quadratic equation where you have ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to, to zero, the sum of the roots, which is alpha plus beta, is equals to minus b over a, and also the product of the root, which is alpha beta, is equals to c over a. So we have successfully proved that the sum of roots, that is the sum of the solutions towards a quadratic equation is equals to minus b over a. And we have also successfully proved that the product of the roots for that quadratic equation is also c over a. So in this particular session, we will be doing three examples to find the sum of roots and also the product of roots. Now let's look at the first example. We have x squared minus 6x plus 8 is equals to 0. Now we are going to look for our a, b, and c, which are simply the constant terms associated with each of the quadratic expression. Now, a is the coefficient of x squared. A is simply whatever is multiplying x squared. In this particular case, we have 1. What is our b term? Our b term is whatever is multiplying x. And this is minus 6. Our c term is the constant term. And this is 8. So now that we have our a, b, and c, we can simply apply the sum of roots, which is minus b over a, which will now give us minus into minus 6 over 1, which is now becomes 6, because minus times minus will now become plus. So we have 6 as the sum of roots. And therefore, the product of roots, which is c over a, we have 8 over 1, and that gives us 8. So let's look at the next term, x squared minus 9x plus 14 is equals to zero. What is our A term? A term is simply what is multiplying our x squared. So we know that our x squared is an imaginary one here that is multiplying x squared. So we know that our A is one. What is multiplying BMX, which is our B? So we know that it is minus nine. And that's why our b is equals to minus 9. And what is the constant term? Our c term is a constant term, and that is 14. So we know that our sum of roots will be minus b over a, and b is minus 9 over 1. So minus times minus is 9. So that gives us the sum of roots being equals to 9, and then the product of roots, which is simply c over a, 
we know what our C is and we know what our A is. So it is 14 divided by 1 and that is 14. So our sum of roots is 9 and our product of roots is 14 for this second example. Let's look at the third example. So what is our A term? We know that it is 1. What is our B term? We know that the B term is what is multiplying X. We have minus 8. And what is our C term? This is the constant term here, which is 15. So our sum of roots is simply minus B over A, which is minus minus 8 over A. That is minus 8 over 1, which is minus times minus becomes positive. So you have 8. And then our product of the roots, which is C over A, which is 15 over 1, which is equals to 15. So we have successfully calculated the sum of roots and also the product of roots. Now, let's look at this again. S squared minus 6x plus 8 is equals to 0. That's the first one. Now, this, the, pro, the roots of this equation, x is equals to 4 and x is equals to 2. These are the roots. Now, if we find the sum of these roots, 4 plus 2 is 6. If we find the product, that is the multiplication, 4 times 2 is 8. And that corresponds with what we have above without even solving for the roots. And let's look at the second one, x squared minus 9x plus 14 is 0. The solution to this particular um, quadratic expression is x is equals to 7 and x is equals to 2. If we find the sum, we have 9. And if we have calculate the product, we have 14. And this corresponds with what we have above. Now, if we look at the third example, we have s squared minus 8x plus 15 is 0. If we look at the solution of the roots, we have x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 5. Now, if we look at the sum, we simply have 3 plus 5, which is 8, and also the product, which is 3 times 5, and that's equals to 15. And that corresponds to what we have above. So using the formula minus B over A for the sum and also C over A for the product of roots is sufficient. And this corresponds to what we have seen below. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed, kindly subscribe to this channel, like, and share. Thank you.